Hello everyone, this is Nalchudin here, and welcome back to Science Explained. This is episode number 10, and should be the last episode of the Science Explained series. Now, it doesn't mean you won't be seeing any more Science Explained videos, just stay tuned. Click subscribe and the little bell down there so you wouldn't miss my new videos. Anyways, today we're taking a look at nitrogen as an element. So, in the very first video of mine, I gave a very brief introduction to nitrogen, like very, very brief. So, I think it would be good to refresh the topic just a little bit, improve the graphics, add more information, and make it more interesting. So, just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's video. And if you do so, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as it would be a great help to me. So, without any further ado, let's get into the topic then. Now let's first start off with some hard facts. Nitrogen is a gaseous element, which has an atomic number of 7 and a relative atomic mass of 14.007. It is in period 2, group 15, right on top of phosphorus. It has a melting point of 63 Kelvin, boiling point of 77.4 Kelvin, and a density of 1.25 gram per litre at 0 degrees Celsius. Nitrogen as an element commonly exists as a diatomic gaseous form. Nitrogen gas is a type of inert gas, which means it's not very reactive thanks to its strong molecular triple bond. But once the bond is broken and the nitrogen atom is free, it will be significantly more reactive and forms many compounds such as azo compounds, ammonium compounds, and cyanides. And these are indeed very useful compounds. Azo compounds are found in dyes, ammonium compounds is used widely in the manufacturing process of chemicals and cyanides, well, its use is in one of my previous videos, link down below. A brief intro full of facts over, now let's take a look at some nitro compounds, nitrogen itself and some of their uses. Diatomic nitrogen, the only form pure nitrogen will take in ordinary pressures and temperatures is very common. It's mostly found in the atmosphere, it exists as a gas in room temperatures and normal pressures, however when applied pressure and low temperature, it will condense and form liquid nitrogen, a very useful cryogenic liquid. It is used commonly in science experiments, the freezing and transporting of food products, the cryopreservation of living cells, and some use it just for fun. Still, liquid nitrogen is very useful and has an important role in our daily lives. Nitrogen as a gas is everywhere. They make up more than 78% of the Earth's atmosphere. Food packagings are sometimes filled with pure nitrogen as it is an inert gas, so we not run around and ruin the food like oxygen does, so that's nice. Now, nitrogen as an abundant element on Earth naturally forms a lot of compounds, but of course us humans synthesize nitrogen and other things to form more compounds for our needs. Nitric acid, for example, is a very useful acid. It's widely used in labs and industrial production such as the production of ammonium nitrate which is an explosive and potassium nitrate or more commonly known as saltpeter. Another useful compound is ammonia. Now, a lot of you might be confused between ammonia and ammonium. Ammonia is N3 so there's 3 hydrogen there and ammonium has 4, therefore ammonium is a positive ion which is used in fertilizers while ammonia is widely used in the production of nitric acid and nitrogen fertilizers and also is used for coolant, for things like refrigerators and air conditioners. Okay, so other than these, of course, there are also lots more nitrogen compounds, but they're not really worth talking about as they're not the most useful of the bunch. So, let's take a look at something you should be visiting or had already visited in your 10th or 11th year, nitrogen cycle. Now, I will try to explain it in a simple way, but if you feel bored or if you found that I've made errors on things, please comment down below. Nitrogen cycle is a biochemical cycle in which nitrogen is converted into a variety of forms throughout the atmosphere and various biological ecosystems. In human language, it means nitrogen cycles through air, dirt, living things, changing forms in the process. Hopefully, that's simple enough for your understanding. Now, as nitrogen cycle is a cycle, nitrogen has to complete a lot of procedures or steps while transforming the process in order to complete the cycle. As we all know, the most abundant pure form of natural nitrogen on Earth is diatomic nitrogen gas, which makes up most of the atmosphere. And those nitrogen molecules are being transformed into other nitrogen compounds by a process called nitrogen fixation. 
As I have introduced earlier, diatomic nitrogen is not very reactive, so it's practically useless to living organisms. However, living organisms need nitrogen in order to survive. Our body cells are all made up of proteins, which is made up of amino acids, which contains nitrogen. Nitrogen plays an even more important role in plants. First, the cells are made up of them, and one thing that sustains plant life, chlorophyll, which has a very important role in photosynthesis. And plants sadly cannot hunt for food like animals, so they absorb nitrogen and other nutrients from soil. Anyways, back to nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen can be fixed by lots of things. The only real natural way without involving living things is through lightning. Lightning combines the nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere to form nitrogen oxide, which seeps through the soil to make nitrates, which are absorbed by plants for the use. However, most of the time nitrogen is fixed by microorganisms such as bacteria. They fix nitrogen into ammonia with help from an enzyme called nitrogenase. <laughs> I know, definitely a very interesting and nice name right there. This type of enzyme also fixes dinitrogen into other nitrogen compounds so they could be used by plants. So, after these diatomic nitrogen got fixed into other compounds, they need to be further transformed into nitrates in order for them to be utilised by plants. If the nitrogen is fixed by lightning, it pretty much goes straight to nitrate form, but if it is biologically fixed, we will be undergoing a process called nitrification, as the result of biological nitrogen fixation produces ammonia which is toxic to plants. Ammonia is converted to nitrite by a certain type of bacteria, and is later converted to nitrate by some other type of bacteria. The nitrates were then absorbed by plants through their root system and are used to sustain life and make stuff. The plant's residues and excrements of animals are dissolved in soil and is converted back to ammonia by a process called ammonification, again, by bacteria. And the cycle continues on and on. Ah, finally, done with the nitrogen cycle and actually this video is also coming to an end. Before you go, again, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so I would reach my goal of 100 subscribers before the end of the year. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.